Hi, this is Stacy K with the Farmhouse in the Field. We are on a field trip today. I'm glad to bring you out to the Genesee County Museum. It's a place I've been trying to get to for approximately 25 years now. Today they're actually having a lunch and learn all about fashions to dye for. And it's concerning the dyes that they would have used to actually make fabric, paint, or to color it, to dye it the natural dyes versus the aniline dyes and what their problems were with those and what the benefits were with those. It's going to be an interesting talk and I can't, I can't wait to see it. So I thought I'd bring you along as somebody that's interested in knowing about how things were done and how women traditionally would have kept house and how they would have kept their homes and their families. I think this is going to be an exciting time. No. N-I-L, was Sanskrit for deep blue, and Anno was an ancient term for indigo. So he's sort of aligning himself to indigo, which is this very predictable, rich, rich blue dye, and introducing this new aniline dye, modern, but based in the past, or associated with the past, in order to produce deep purples. So his Perkins purple was a bit like this. By the time he was 21, he and his brothers had set up a factory outside of London where they were making this by the ton and selling it to people all over the world. Purple was so hard to get and stay because his dye was colored fast. And so suddenly you see these deep purples coming into play. Whereas before, you might find purple, but you knew it was going to wash out. That was followed by magenta, named after the French Battle of Magenta. At first, it was going to be called, um, not moving, but there was another color sort of like mauve, and it followed with um, lilac, which had to go through and numerous renditions. So you get these costumes which are beribboned with purple, and in some cases you get, as a sign of wealth, an entire dress dyed this shade of purple, probably using an aniline dye, Perkins purple. But again, lots of different recipes being kicked around at the time. And one of the things I wanted to show you was a loan that we have right now from Susan Green. And this is a sample book. And she believes this is probably from France and probably about the 1860s, although there are a few Let's see, pieces coming off. Put it back in. So if you would like to take that and just open a few pages, I think one of the things you'll be surprised at is how modern some of the designs are and just how intense they are. Do I grow up handling it every time they cut a length off to sell to someone? Think of the seamstresses cutting out the patterns, fitting it, sewing it. You know, and then people who are working Using different berries, um, Persian berries, which give you a yellow. And then they were using uh, different types of blue dyes, indigo, Saxony blue, and over dyeing. Maybe starting out with blue and starting out with green. And they would come up with this very olive green color, <coughs> very typical of the late 18th century. At the same time, people were trying to get to green, and someone once said, well, why can't they use grass or something like that? They did. There was a chlorophyll green, but the problem was it wasn't colored fast. So they were using grasses and other plant material to try to get that green, but the, the whole question was the fastest. By using a blue and then over it with yellow, they could get some sort of green. But in the 17, 1775, you had different chemists already working on how to get 
a good green color. It's very fashionable, but you know, very hard to get. And there was a German by the name of Schiele who came up, again, chemistry background, with a really good green. And he used um, basically the oxide of, no, chromium of arsenate, arsenic to get that green. And that was a good, brilliant green. Um, depending on if you added a little blue to it, you could get an emerald green. And those really deep, vivid greens just happen to be Napoleon's favorite color. And in his various um, palaces that he had at, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of the, the house he used in uh, Paris, it's escaping right now, but his library and his bedroom suite, all done in green. When he went into exile, his bedroom had green bed hangings, green upholstery, green wallpaper. The big problem with this particular type of dye is it's friable. So if you, by friable, we mean it flakes off. So if you're sitting with your arms on your green upholstery, and your hands are rubbing back and forth as you're thinking about you know, what you're going to do. You're absorbing some of that arsenic into your skin. Oh, 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 oh. Now, they did an autopsy on Napoleon when he died, and they found that he had very high levels of arsenic. And there have been all these rumors about he was being poisoned. And there are a lot of people who say, well, actually, it might not be that um, he was deliberately killed, but it could be that the armchairs in the bed had means getting in, you know, that he, you know, just acquired this. And there are recorded deaths from people who handled these green dyes. Usually it wasn't the person who wore them, it was the person who had daily exposure to this stuff that really could get quite sick. And it's a great example of a turkey red. Now, now you have <laughs> closer, right? Now they would have used madder, which is a plant that grows. And there are a lot of people who probably grew madder and had a dye plants growing in their backyard too. But not all matter is made, it's the same way, it's the same thing. Just like all strawberries aren't the same. Um, the matter that came from Turkey was highly concentrated because of the variety, because of the soil, because of the water, the growing conditions. And so you get a great variation in colors, but the matter was very often used um, to get any tone from a rusty brown all the way up to purple, depending what you combined it with. If you were using logwood, that would take you into the purple tones. But again, they were very fugitive, and logwood would Pretty. be hard on the cloth. Now, another way that they would get reds and pinks, and by the way, matter was also used to create pinks. That's it. Every sort of shade in the rainbow from Right mm -hmm. with a little strain to a rusty brown.
Oh, how pretty. Aren't these pretty? Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well. Look at how dainty those are. Stacey K. from the Farmhouse in the Field at Jesse County Museum. Saw a lot of the museum. There's a lot to see. It really gives you a sense of how these people lived and how they were so very self-sufficient and how they made their way through life basically on what they knew and what they learned. It was great to see all the buildings. I did not see as many things as I would like to see. Uh, the village apparently closes at 4. And there's so much to see here. So uh, I will probably be back at some future date. 
but I captured a lot of video. I hope that you enjoy what you see here. And if you get a chance, come out and visit.